David Beauchamp, and these are my two wonderful co-hosts, Angela Pritchett and Drew Meyer. Um, today we are going to be discussing some breaking new who's, uh, and we're also going to be reviewing uh, Doctor Who, The Face of Evil. Um, so let's just jump on in here with our review, and because we'll get to the news in, in, in a little later about the faces of evil and i believe you have a quick and spoil, spoil oh spoiler free, free synopsis. synopsis all right so yes. here we go down and dirty of it uh the doctor arrives on an unnamed planet and discovers or runs into leela ah beginning of the companion leela who has been exiled from the tribe of the seven team for speaking out against the god zoanan uh, the doctor then realizes that not everything as as it seems between these two warring tribes between the 17 and the tesh Especially when he realizes the giant edifice of his face, the face of evil. How's that for an impromptu the synopsis? The Mount Rushmore of Doctor Who. The Mount Rushmore of Doctor Who's. Well, yeah, which is funny that you would say Mount Rushmore's because they actually did joke quite a bit in, in the behind I the just, scenes. I just want to see about... a, a, another Doctor go back later to the same planet and there be another Doctor's head right That's next to That's brilliant! It. Are you kidding me? That's that brilliant! Is, we're all from the show. Brilliant! Up. Yeah, you know, I've been wondering if we, you know, with, you know, the 50th, you know, I just can't stop talking about it. If we're not going to revisit some classic who, you know, settings. Uh -huh. And I mean, I think this would be a truly classic who setting to oh, revisit. They, they need to have the really cheesy setting, though, with the fabric hanging down that doesn't well, look anything like grass. I remember leaves. this place looking cheaper. No. Yes. <laughs> no, that, they actually, jumping sadly to the um, some, some of the production notes, they, they really like that design. And I got to say that it, if we're talking about what we like about it, I really like the sort of. The effect they got with the jungle. I mean, I, I really, I really, really, really when, enjoyed when the jungle. When they had them going through the the hanging down, the I loved greenery, it. it just it looks so fake. I it, I don't know. It's something with classic who I could just it it doesn't well, fake as me. There's certain things of classic who I really like, but that's one of them that I just saw and I went ooh. Oh, I was wow. like, that's awesome. So, so what did what let's since we're already starting to talk about what we like about this, what did we really like about the faces of evil? Really? Just, Leela! Just, yeah. Let's just talk about Leela. Come on. Like right Leela. now we're starting with Leela. Um, please, Angela, Leela. I yeah. love Leela. She's like, she has to be one of my favorite classic Who companions. I mean, she's just, she questions everything and she's edgy and she she takes the his, his random answers occasionally and she's just kind of like, okay. But I mean, just love Leela. Davey, Leela? Uh, yeah, I think she has one of the best entries into the TARDIS. <laughs> she she just in she there. just storms in. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think I buttons. think that's what stands out about her besides being the uh, Eliza Doolittle of the Who universe. Um, but yeah, I, I think honestly, I mean, I, I enjoyed the episode. You know, not super high on my list of favorites, but she is what makes this episode. Um, I think she's the best part about it, and just the way she enters in the TARDIS just freaking rocks. She just like storms in because like I don't want to travel with anybody because Baker really didn't want to travel with anybody at the time, and she just storms on in and is just like I'm 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 she taking it over. Spoilers: the end of the show, she spo you know, storms on in. I you know what? This actually does rank among my one of my favorites really? of, the, of the classic Who's. Um, I think it's it's brilliant science fiction. Um, one. You have a Doctor Who in which you, you more or less don't have a monster. Very rare for that. They have an alien life form, but doesn't count necessarily as a monster. The monster of this is actually unseen, except for very briefly. Yeah. Um, it, it, this one reminded me actually of Planet of Evil in many ways. One I did like the, mm -hmm. the set. I thought it was a good job. Yeah. It's not as good as Planet of Evil. 
sorry, but Planet of Evil still has one of the best setups they, they ever did. Um, and it has what is just a, a beautiful science fiction feel to it. Oh, um, yeah. What happens, and as someone has studied anthropology, what happens to a culture as it extends? And then as someone who studies religion in anthropology, that to me was actually quite brilliant. Two sides of religion, um, particularly as, as it's going on in our, our contemporary lives, this really struck uh, me as going on, not to go into that, yeah. but um, I thought it was, I, really, I, I can't say enough about it. What, what, as I was watching this, what really jumped out to me, h how much the doctor's daughter is like this episode. Mm, very much I so, I mean, right. I was just like, wow. I mean, and I mean, I really wasn't like, what really wasn't watching the confidentials back then. I really want to watch the doctor's daughter now because I want to know if the writers did draw inspiration from the face of evil because it just, it, it seems to parallel each other so much. Hmm. Um, you know, you have your, your two factions, they were both brought here, um, brought to the planet, and they're both dealing with a situation that they don't understand. Of course, one's generational with, with faces of evil, and the other one had happened in a span of weeks, though it is also generational in that sense. But I just, I really love, I like the parallels there, even though I know this came first. It'd be interesting to see if they drew from the face of evil for the Doctor's Daughter. Because I, I just think there are a lot of parallels between the two. Sure. Yeah, I can, I can see that yeah. uh, quite a bit. Um, this has some just, again, I actually think really good acting as well. Um, oh, yeah. I think uh, Neva, the priest, did an excellent job. Oh, yes. It's, and, and, and I'll tell you who what really shines in this video um, is the costuming. The costuming oh, is yes, really I gorgeous. I um, uh, I think that the, the folks who put it together really took what would happen if what happens to anachronistic technology as the civilization outdates the technology, where is that place, yeah. especially in religion? Well, it also, it also reminded me, because I wanted you to talk about the costuming, it reminded me a lot of The Road Warrior mm -hmm. and Mad Max and stuff like that. You know, they took what they had left over and, you know, were part, they were wearing it. It was what they had to cover themselves with, you know, what they had to, you know, worship, you know. It is the hand of Zoanan. Yeah. So costuming. Well, the, you're, you're it a costuming was girl. very yeah. It was very different, as you said. You have the two; they're the same kind of, but they're different. So you have the barbaric seventeen, which kind of have the the leather, and you can tell that they've had to live off of where they're at. And then you have the Tesh, which have these very toy box looking soldier <laughs> outfits. And their ship was actually really cool too. The ship was cool. The ship yeah. was like. The woods were cheesy, I thought, but the ship was really cool with all the mirrors and everything. Oh, but my goodness, yeah. Set design for that. Yeah. Really Talk neat. about your hallway workings. Yeah. But they're, they kind of reminded me of, like, what a Nutcracker would wear. Do oh, yeah. Know? Yeah, sure. I, get to, I see that. So. I see that. Yeah. Uh, something else, um, not because we're looking at a comparison between the Tesh and the Seventeen. Yeah. Um, is the salutes to one another, I think, was very interesting. Yes. The... Uh, no, let's see. It's neck, shoulder, opposite, pouch, and and the yeah. Which I tell you, just watching the the uh, the Tesh doing this repeatedly, it's like, man, I would I would just move out into the I savages like, just to well, avoid having to do that. I also thought it was very awkward. There were no Tesh women. Yeah. I, I I was gonna oh I was gonna say yeah. that yes. There's <laughs> only two women on the entire planet. Yeah. There's, there's two women. There were, there's okay. another woman as they're marching to the war against the Tesh. There's one woman who just kind of looks... With a, with, with a, with a crossbow. crossbow! And it just kind of looks a little confused. She's like, you know, we just realized that Leela is the only woman on this planet. Yep. Um, <laughs> here. Chill! Get in there! PA, get in here! Yeah. Um, one, one thing I did like, you know, talking about the differences between the two, is the one Tesh that actually expresses emotion gets yelled at. Yelled at! And he has to re-say everything calmly the way they would say it. The way a computer would say it. Exactly. Yeah, and the way a technical manny would say it. Exactly. Yeah. No. Um, is there anything we didn't like about this episode? I have a complaint with this episode. Uh, and it has to do with the script. Um, again, obviously we're spoiling everything, so let's go ahead and do it. Um, the doctor realizes that um, he has played a part in the, our, our main antagonist's role in the creation of this, Zoan and the mad computer. 
and he realizes that this must have happened last time he was on this planet. Okay, so doctor, has the planet changed so much? Or did you not remember the name Zoanin from the computer you helped to fix? That's my main concern is, did the name Zoanin evolve the same way the Seven Team and the Tesh's names evolved from just as a generational gap? Um, you know, I have a, I have a problem. Well, or could it be, I mean, because one of the, I should have said, one of the things I really liked about this episode was the Doctor finally realizes there are consequences for his actions. Sure. Which you don't see a lot in Doctor Who. It's true. Um, and especially with such a generational thing. But if you think of how many adventures he has, you know, things aren't linear to him. I mean, it could have been a hundred years for him when he actually, it, he encountered them for the first time. You know, we don't know. We don't oh, know. Thousand oh, for for him. him. For him, we don't know how long ago it was, how many adventures he had. Um, so it's it's really hard to say. And I, I can't believe I'm actually defending Baker here or a Baker story like this. But I just think he didn't realize. We don't know how long it had been for him versus how long it had been for them. True. Well, uh, let's, let's let's go to assume that it's been a long enough time yeah. that he didn't remember it which is very interesting in Doctor Who chronology because we get to see Baker become Baker, the, yeah. the, the Baker Doctor. We assume we've been watching all of his adventures more or less because when he was there last, was there not a companion with him? If there was a companion with him, it had to exist in this. So there, there were other, other companions. And so it's yeah. really nice that it hints at, and I was going to say the flip side of the right. not liking how they presented it, is allowing this possibility that there are adventures that existed. And this is long before any um, non-serial novelizations yeah. had occurred. This is before uh, Doctor Who fan fiction, essentially, had become uh, come about, or before the radio scripts. So we're getting a story, uh, a possible hint. Uh, we don't get many of that. We start no. to get them only in the Bakers. We also get that in... Um, uh, uh, Brain of Morbius yeah. um, with the potential doctors who he could have been which of course they that's another show that's, yeah. that's a whole other show the, I mean, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll have to get just, into an yeah. argument about that at some point in time yeah. um, but it's it's nice to, to almost expand the universe before the universe was expanded yeah because I mean if you look at it because I actually went back and I was curious about who his companions were before Lula sure and it was just Sarah Jane and Harry that yep. was it that's it I mean I did not realize she because this this was sort of near the start of the 14th season. Doctor Who was at one of its highest highest spots. And Baker was, you know, happy to see Liz Slade and go so he could be by himself. Right. Um, that's why they got the Deadly Assassin without a companion. But, um, yeah, I mean, there isn't... So, I mean, if I was going to take a guess, it happened somewhere after... Liz left. Liz left. Or it at, happened with Liz. Exactly. Right. And Harry. Yeah. So, well, no, Harry, no, keep in mind, Harry leaves, and he travels with Liz um, alone for, for several episodes. Yeah. So it could, you know, poor Harry. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you not like about this episode? Hmm. Well, I mean, other than, like, the, the really cheesy, this that's really just mostly in the opening for the whole, like, scenery, is when Leela's going around the forest, and it just, it so blatantly looks like fabric. It just doesn't look like And air anymore. duct team tubes. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I really liked it for some I strange reason. I did like reason. the little slug things, though. I thought they were creepy. They were very much like Cybernets to yeah, me. Yeah, they were. They were very much like Cybernets. Uh, they were, um, and that's a really nice thing, too, is is with this film, um, you the design's really excellent, and we get, yeah. uh, oh, now I can't remember your name. That's horrible. I knew it before, and I was going to say, um, uh, who had been an assistant designer, and now yes. is in charge of it now. Um, he was the one who designed Boris the Spider from Planet of the Spiders. Um, yeah, Irvin. Mark Irvin. Yeah. Mark Irvin, uh, this is kind of his first solo gig designing the um, the, the face of everything. evil itself, the I spaceships, yeah. everything but the hallways. So we have a different designer for that. but No, I think he did it too. Because they were talking about how he'd solved this, the, the, the age-old mystery about making running around corridors interesting mm -hmm. and different. But have, have you had your face cast yet in Algernon? I, I've, I've had it done before, yeah. Because yeah. they, what is that like? Because I'm kind of curious to hear what it's like from a person that's actually done it versus just the interviews that they gave about it. It's basically you're just getting this gelatinous stuff put yeah. on you, and you have to sit there for, depending on how long it casts, it's about, mine was like an hour. And then they take plaster bandages and put that over your face, but you have two little air holes. You can't see anything. Your eyes are closed the whole time, and you have, like, petroleum jelly all over your face. 
so the stuff will release because you have hair on your face. And yeah, just kind of sitting there vulnerable for an hour when um, people want to come and try and shake you or try and scare you when you are in total and complete darkness and can't move because your face, you can't even really move your facial expressions because the stuff would mess yeah. up. Yeah, because they were talking about how they cast Baker's face, and you only get it from the makeup guy's point of view. You don't get it from Baker's. Um... Who's probably grumpy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, I've done it with Plaster of Paris. I've, I've done the... Um, oh, have you? I've done gauze strips, oh, nice. and um, I've had my face cast. And it was it was fun. You know, I, I like being able to breathe through um, two little straws. and Mine didn't have straws. They just put holes there. Oh, nice. Yeah. That probably would have been preferable, maybe. Um, not having things... So... My... And so now that since we're sort of getting on, on the topic of the special features, I still think um, we should talk more about Leela, but that's yeah. <laughs> well, we're, well, well, I mean, Louise Jameson talks. I mean, they do a it's wonderful, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful interview, interview with her. Um, with her. And I gotta say, I was surprised about one thing about the interview. They talk about the publicity photos. <clears throat> sure, oh, the which face. I had never seen until this until I watched that. Yeah, the original makeup artist for her um, who got fired blackfaced her. Yeah. And it was atrocious. It was, and she had no idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because this was her first major TV gig. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really enjoyed that. I, I, I watched them on. I, I gotta say, I, for this not being a special edition, I thought they did a really phenomenal job with the special features. Um, did you um, watch any of the special I, features? I didn't get to watch all of them, but I was yeah. looking over what they had. Yeah. I tell you, my favorite That's part of the special set. features, and I, and I actually enjoy Doctor Who's for their special features almost more than the episodes themselves because uh, I really enjoy a making of. Yeah. Um, I, I concur with you. I mean, I I get really excited. The only reason I watched the episode first this time was to make sure I had seen it for sure. a recording, and then the next thing I did, I was just just watch the speech, special features after sure. that. There's a wonderful. Did you watch the Swap Shop? Oh yeah, I watched it all. I, yeah. uh, my favorite is is Louise Jameson getting this note from this little girl. Please, Miss Jameson, on your next episode of Doctor Who, could you please put more clothes on? Yeah. And uh, it was just like pretty awesome, which reminded me. Um, for those of you who don't know, Maurice Sendak just passed away yesterday. Um, yeah. As a note of saying that once Maurice Sendak just got a a note from a child, and he drew the picture for the child and sent it back to the child, and the parent wrote back and said, "My son was so thrilled." That he ate your drawing. <laughs> he, he was so excited to get it, he just oh. ate it. And I, I don't know if there's two of those kind of fearless yeah. in the same day. And also, well, one thing I thought was r r really cool about it was um, there was a lot of outrage when she left. I mean, Baker didn't really care for her because he didn't like the violent side, and plus he wanted to be by himself. But I mean, he there was a group called SLL. Save, oh, yeah, our, save Lila. our Lila. And yeah. I did not know that. There was a real uproar for about her leaving the show. She had that much of an impact in such a short amount of time. Well, we all know who was was in an uproar. It was the fathers watching the show who suddenly have a real reason. Yeah, they, yeah that was, that was and, kind of funny. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that I think Leela is my second favorite companion. Um, if not tied with Sarah Jane as my, yeah. as my favorite companion. But also keep in mind, audience, that I have yet to finish... Um, classic Who. So I haven't gotten this chance to see any of the companions for Sylvester McCoy. I know that um, Perry is our companion for all of the run of uh, Colin Baker. Yeah. Uh, so um, I don't like her at this point um, in time. So I'm, well, you know, of the companions I've yeah. seen. Um, well, you only have one more really after that, and that's Ace. Ace yeah. and Mel, right? Yeah. Mel Schnook, so. Yeah. Um, and just because this was brought up on, on the special feature, which I, I think is interesting because it fuels a lot of new who debates, mm -hmm. um, the rumor of the doctor becoming a woman dates all the way back to Baker. To Baker. When he just made a small little comment that he hopes that whoever replaces him, guy yeah. or girl... No, he says, I wish him or, or her, her the best of luck. Yeah, so... You know, there, there's been that rumor ever since the fifth doctor that the doctor might become a woman. Yeah. Which I find very fascinating that it, it all started with the baker. Yeah, and that it was, well, that doesn't surprise me in the least. No, it doesn't. It started with baker. <laughs> I know. But, but okay, um, because we need to get to our, new, our, our news and some other fun stuff we're going to do today with this episode. Um, how would you rate this, um, the Derpy Curtis scale? Okay, I still wish we had more than five stars because five stars for me, if we're all limiting to five stars, yeah. five stars is blink, you know? Five stars yeah. is blink. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Force of the Dead, um, Science in the Library. Four and a half for me. Um, 
and that's for the episode. For the special features, um, one of the things that I, I actually missed was Tom Baker um, doing, because a lot of the early prints, Tom Baker actually did talk on, on, on yeah. some of the shows. I miss having Tom Baker on there. Um, it was wonderful having everyone who they had, including um, random guy who was the assassin, um, which, you know, yeah. I knew. but it's good to have someone along on there. Uh, I thought the special features were, were good. Um, I like the news of tomorrow. Um, or, sorry, Tomorrow's Times. Yes, uh, I, I enjoyed Unfortunately, that. Tomorrow's Times, I know you're going to continue to do it, and it's nice to have Wendy Padbury doing it. It's really dry. It's really dry. Come on, smile. Smile once in a while. <laughs> it's really nice to have people with their, their, their Tom Baker impressions, and I, it's great to hear a Scottish accent, but the special features are... It's, it, you know, 14 minutes is, is a while to sit through. Um, so I'm going to go with four and a half for the actual episode itself. Uh, I love the fact that it was remastered. Mm -hmm. And about uh, three and a half to four for the so, special features. So what are you saying? Because we do this as as the a single thing? thing, as a single thing, as a single thing. Four, four. Okay. What about you? I think I'd say four too. I like this episode a whole bunch, but it's not Blink worthy, like high up. Because I do love Blink so much. It's such a great horror episode. Okay, so let's say we're not including Classic Who and New Who in the same thing. If we're just doing one to five derpy tardises for four, classic. Four derpy tardises. See, okay. for me, I, I guess I'm going a bit lower, and the reason why it, it, it gets as many derpy tardises for me is because of the special features. That That's what's really drawing me to a lot of these DVDs, uh, because I look at the, the entire package. Not you know I look at the episode, how good that was, what, it's contribute, what it was contributing to the Who history, and then what we get in the special features. I'm about a three Derby Tardis guy here on this one. If you're looking at, even if I, because I, I look at it at the entire timeline from Classic Who to New Who, I, I think overall, I think it's about a three Derby Tardis purchase. Okay. Um, the Louise Jameson interview was wonderful, but it was from 2003, so yeah. it doesn't discuss any of the New Who, and that's something, BBC, if you're paying attention to this, I really hope that would be nice if you were, I would like to see some New Who people talking about classic who i would like to see more people talking about how they grew up whether or not they grew up in it and comparison what it was like i know they occasionally do that also um the special features a little self-serving i gotta say uh, a little dramatic with the the face of evil repeatedly showing itself <laughs> yeah. from multiple angles and i i think the 3d um the 3d font was very nice and, yeah. and, and no fault on the people who did it i think it's if you're getting a chance to work with this kind of material Wonderful. Um, I also like the, actually the the reel with the multiple takes from different yeah, angles. Yeah, that was that was. was, was I thought that was really very good, enlightening, so. yeah. especially the quack 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 sound. I'm not really sure what happened there. Did he cuss? Did we just cover that up? I, yeah, I think that's what happened uh, with with a few people. I think somebody on set, you know, used profanity and they used that. Um, but I think you're gonna get what you want during the fiftieth. I think there's gonna be a lot of behind of course, the scenes stuff, and I'm, I'm I and I plan to review everything that comes out when, <laughs> with, with, with the fiftieth. Um, I think we should just say we plan to review everything that comes out. Yeah, come on. This yeah, show's not going anywhere. So. Yeah, no. Um, so where, where do we want to fall on the scales of Derpy Tardis? Three and a half? Four? Um, well, let's see. Four, four, three and a half. Let's see. That's I was 11 three. and a half. So that's I, I was, a, uh, I was a three. We were, we're about three and three quarters for that one. Yeah, so we'll do three and a half. Because, and honestly, for, the, you know, the great thing about this, even though it's not a special edition, right. it's only nineteen ninety nine. So it, it's definitely worth worth the price of price of admission. You get an introduction to a new who, a new who companion, um, which is I think which is a, which I think are always important episodes. I, she has an original take on going to the TARDIS. That's I in a way I think a tad bit similar to Amy. You know, Amy sort of you know like sort of char sort of charged in there a little, or I had more control over oh, it. Oh, we're going to talk about Louise Jameson. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about uh, an amazing character who yeah. is is the physicality of Jamie. Yeah. And and Ian from the the Hartnell episode. So you actually have some some violence. There's a lot we of have violence. A strong woman. Yeah. A strong woman. Strong we're we're kind of running that new wave of feminism yeah. here. So we have a woman who can handle her own, and admittedly while still being a, as a sex symbol. But they did a yeah. good job. And she and did ask for the butt flap. She did ask for the butt yeah. flap and uh, in the costume meeting, and she yeah. wanted more butt flap as opposed to less, less butt, butt, butt flap. flap. Yeah. But the thing is, this is. I believe, our very first alien, non-Gallifreyan, because we're not including Susan on this, our first alien companion. Correct? Uh, I don't know. I would, have to go, I would have to go back and check 
some of... Wait, I don't, I don't know about Zoe. Zoe. Zoe's in the future, but she's a human civilization. Yeah, but I don't know if she's... I don't know if she's from Earth or not. Yeah, I don't know if she's a, a human. Of, she's not out of time. Because, right. you know, we have Victoria, who's out of time. We have yeah. Zoe's from the future, Victoria's from the past, Jamie, who's from the past, and so a lot of it has to be explained And Ben and her. Polly were definitely... They Earth were contemporaries. They, yes. were, they were contemporary to the time period uh, that was filmed. Yeah, she, she might be the first, but I'd have to double-check on Zoe. That's the only one that I... I I oh, no, remember. I take that back. She's human ancestor because in the talents of Wang Chiang, he brings her back to show her what her ancestors were like. Yeah. And then he says, I should have brought you back to Agon Court. You would have liked it. she's wearing a different outfit. Too. It's yes. the only episode where that's, she's wearing... No, I take that back. Not a different that. outfit. She's covered. Yeah. 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 So. Oh, uh, one more thing. Yes. Uh, the cover. The cover is the only one I've seen so far that is not a picture. A, uh, a picture um, collage. It's yeah. actually drawn. And they did a really good job with yeah. it. So. Yes. So we'll go, we'll go with overall uh, three and a half Derpy Tardises. Um, this is not a bad one to add to your collection, especially if you oh, want one of those, not. if you want one of those key episodes. Certainly, yeah. So. Check it out. Yes. So moving on. I always, I always love covering New Who News. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually got a, a tad today um, about our new companion. Mm, that, is, that is coming, that we're getting in December. And we're going to be doing two little things here today. Um, and then after we do our two little things, I'm going to make predi my prediction about who she is. I'm probably going to be absolutely wrong, but I'm going to make the predictions now just in case I'm right. So Moffat said this about um, the new companion, Jenna. I'll answer you in the show about how it's going to be different. But because it is going to be different, it's going to be a shock. I think in terms of companions all being the same, that's not as phony or artistic crap a thing to say as it sounds. What is the base group of people who would run away with the doctor? They're all going to be a bit mad, a bit dislocated, not happy with where they are, and they're learning, yearning for outer space. <coughs> They're going to be people who feel like they can take on the doctor, um, who's a, a quite intimidating person, so they're going to be feisty. They're going to be all those things he sort of defines the people who are going to travel with him. Um, and I was like, I think I know who she is. Um, and then I picked up, as I was waiting uh, for people uh, today, the newest issue of Doctor Who magazine for us in the States. I can't wait for the next one, which is the Dalek episode issue. Oh, yes. Um, and what I discovered in here, which surprised me, is the audition script, which we are going cool. to perform for you today. Um, Did you make a copy? Do we have two copies with it? No, we're going to have to read off the same one. Right. I'm going to be the doctor. Uh-huh. And sorry. I'm you don't gonna... You don't get to be the girl. That's, oh, oh, that's okay. I was hoping you were going to say Drew was going to be the girl, or you were going to be the girl. I could be the doctor. It'd be awesome. No, you... No. I have to be the doctor. No, I, I gave you the doctor. Oh, well. You get to be Jasmine, which I'm actually curious if that's going to be what her, her companion name is or not, because I don't think they've actually mentioned her name yet. Jasmine. Um, so we're going to do the... Um, Latin. We're going to do the, the audition script. Um, and it starts with, the doctor and Jasmine are investi investigating a haunted house. So you saw it coming in here? What did it look like? Gray, sort of dusty. Like it was made of spider webs. And it came through the wall? Yeah, that wall there. And made a moaning sound? Moaning, groaning, yeah. But you don't think it was a ghost? Why not? Because there's no such things as ghosts. You know, a lot of people who saw what you saw wouldn't still think that. Obviously. Otherwise there wouldn't be idiots who believed in ghosts. What were you doing here? I love this place. It's beautiful. It's falling apart. It's old. I love old things. They make me feel sad. What's good about sad? It's happy for deep people, you know. I'm not sad. Oh, you are though. Under all that talking and leaping about, it takes one to know one. So you come here for recreational sadness? Yeah, in a way. Okay, why are you looking at me like that? You remind me of an old friend of mine. Someone I lost a long time ago. Down boy, I'm not her. Oh, I know you're not. I don't believe in ghosts either. Oh my god, what was that? Oh, just stay calm. But that's the thing I saw before. 
Yep, and it's coming towards us. I, ex I expect you notice that. Say it with me. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. Louder. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. Will this work? No idea. Never met a ghost before. So that was her audition. And Moffat did write this. Well, he also wrote Blink, so... And I really do think that this is a key to who she, who she could possibly be. Um, and for me, actually, what, what do you think of, you two, what do you guys think of what, this audition? What, they directly took a whole chunk of the script from, it's, it's happy for these people. I mean, come on, it's, it's Blink, <laughs> that's brilliant, it's Sally Sparrow. Um, so that's what I think. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if that's, if he's revealing that as a, look who this could potentially be or in fact it's simply I just took a couple of different things and wrote it to see what people would I'm just trying to throw like. off all the people who think way too much about Doctor Who we think way too much about Doctor Who we do we do so I mean do you think it reveals who she might be I don't know who do you think she might be well, what do you think about the, this, this I don't script? know I mean it's a side sometimes audition sides have to do with an episode sometimes they're just audition fodder so because basically it sounds like we're going to take a little bit of blink and peter pan <laughs> i do believe in fairies i do believe in fairies i do believe in fairies. i don't believe in ghosts i don't believe in ghosts um this is sort of my prediction and i i'd sort of been i wasn't leaning towards one of these um because sadly i did want a regeneration scene for them actually for both these characters but with the dialogue about him reminding her of somebody from his past, mm -hmm. and and the comments that he said that she is going to be able to outspeak the doctor, and she sort of sees through him. Mm -hmm. um, Susan or Romana? I that's that's where I'm laying my money down. I I really really am. Um, I could be totally wrong, but I don't know after reading that and what he said there and his previous comments, I think she is definitely somebody from his past. Um, and it only makes sense that it can be a Time Lord. Um, and I really have a strong... Because he says that's going to be one of the biggest mysteries of next season, it, once once we get her, is who is she? Hmm. Um, and who knows, maybe it could be Susan's daughter. Maybe it could be Ramona's daughter. But I think she, she's going to have some sort of tie to Classic Who because she knows who he is. I mean, she, I have a feeling that she's going to know who he is. Well, who? Who? Who are you, Doctor Who? You know? Well, then you start going into the whole... He wrote, rewrote history in the end of season five. So yes. does that history still exist? Well, sure, if you're in e-space and you're not affected by it. Exactly. Um, okay. So, I mean, I don't know. Dresses I just, like Ace. <laughs> I, I, I just, I have this, and I think, because he says it's going to be shocking, but it's going to be one of those magical sort of shocks, those magical surprises that, you know, that's going to make everybody happy. Well, here's the thing, too. It makes him make everybody happy. If it is someone from his past, yeah. then Moffat has the difficult yet enviable task of bridging that gap uh, between Classic Who and Modern Who, yeah. especially for people who do not know Classic Who. Right. You know, if you haven't watched 151 episodes of Classic <laughs> Who, which of course yeah. you can't, um, how are you going to make that information known unless the Doctor's essentially reliving his own history, which would be in the 50th year yeah. might not necessarily be a bad idea um and and the, and, and the thing is moffat has been dropping hints about his family about his past about his other regenerations especially dr one dr two look how many times those images have come up in the show mm -hmm. and the reference to family and we all know who his or at least one true relative is susan I was just trying to get you to say something. Okay, more. I was, I was like, because yeah. you say that and you're talking about modern who, and then you're like, his one true relative, and I'm like, yeah, wait, we don't what? know his one true relative. But no, well, if Susan's related. If, well, yeah, but if you, 
are only talking modern who it is. People who've only seen modern people have no idea who Susan is. Yeah, but his one true relative mm-hmm. is is Jen, uh, Jenny. Yeah, but or I mean, even like if he married Rick River Song, then right. she's his relative now. No, his wife. No, she's, you don't marry the usually robot. relative. Marry your relatives. Yeah, no, well, but you know what I mean. But, but I mean, he's not considered one. Well, I mean, the thing is, is Moffat his entire time has been hinting at at, at classic who's past. And he's made such a big deal about family. Who else has been in, in the little rocker thing? I just... I, I forget. Crib. The crib. That's it. The crib. Um, Where's the baby? It's in the rocker thing. <laughs> but um, I think Moffat's doing a good job of introducing people to elements of Classic Who. And it seems like Moffat is really focusing heavy on the family aspect. And the only other person we know that was really part of the doctor's family was Susan. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know... His aunt, what's-his-face, who gave him the thingy. Yeah, exactly. That did the stuff. Oh, yeah, exactly. But, um, I don't know. I, that's, 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 my, that's my hope, is that... I mean, and it would be great to see a regeneration scene. Of it, someone else? Yeah, oh, you know, of, like, Susan going to her, or Ramona becoming her. Because um, just think how much fun that, that actress could have messing with the Matt Smith character. The Matt Smith doctor. I mean, I, that would just be so... Especially if she doesn't know that she she is that character. You look so young. Her. I look young. Look at you. You're infantile, even. Yeah. But, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm getting more and more excited for Christmas. Um, though they were also now talking that we the show may not start in August okay. now. Um, we're looking at possibly September. Um... <laughs> Which is sad, but it doesn't matter. It's almost here. <laughs> it's almost here. Um, and honestly, I don't know what I'm more excited about. Episode one um, with the dialects. Episode five with the angels and the departure of Amy and Rory. Or this Christmas special. I mean, it's... I'm always excited for the Christmas special. Um, because honestly, I think this is going to be the first Christmas special. Moffat doesn't focus on... A Christmas story per se, but has it set in Chris on Christmas? Like oh. like Davies always said it on Christmas, but it wasn't a Christmas story. Whereas yeah. like the past two have definitely been Christmas stories. I guess the last that, one was kind of a Christmas story. Yeah. Yeah. So this is gonna. Be, I think this might be. Now he might totally surprise me. I mean, this could be Mrs. Claus for all we know. I was gonna go with Mrs. Claus. I mean. Or Rudolph. Yeah, could be. Yeah. But you, you know, could be like the last unicorn type Rudolph, where Rudolph's been turned into a human. Yeah, there you go. And all <gasps> it takes is pushing the Red Bull back <gasps> into the ocean oh, yes. of time. No, I figured it out. I know who she is. All right, she's K nine. She's K nine. She's K nine. Turned into a woman, kind of like it Idris. could be chameleon. That would be so awesome. And then she could spend the entire series only kind of moving her mouth and sort of moving her hands. Oh, would it be better than the Black Guardian? The Black Guardian. <laughs> Fantastic. And that would be a really emotional scene. Because everyone would be going, what? Why? Yes. Um, so is there any, I mean, any anything else we have for this episode? I want to talk more about Leela. Uh, yay, Leela. Well, a funny thing about Leela. Um, in her first two, like, stories, um, that night, that was a real knife. Absolutely. It a was a knife. real knife. And it wasn't until she had to throw it across the room in the uh what was the what was the Andrew Robots episode? of Death. Robots of Death, that they're like, this is a bad idea. Yeah, that is a sharp knife. Yeah. Um and really you should get into the watch the special, value. Yeah. special features. And then they went to um the blunt knife. Yeah, I mean honestly the special features on these classic who DVDs are just absolutely phenomenal. There's a wonderful book written by um David Howe, uh, called just the Companions. And it's just a kind of a oh, he wrote that? list. He did he wrote that okay. one as well. Um that in time frame. Uh in which it talks, it rates each one of the companions by their scream factor. Um, and of course it gives Victoria, the, she is the scream queen of the Doctor Who universe, and it comes to Leela and said Leela will never, would never scream. Yeah. Of course she's allowed one scream she, in no, the she, entire... She, she let herself have one scream. I know, she allowed yeah. herself one scream when being attacked by the giant rat uh, yeah. from the towns of Lenshiang. And it's, she said it wasn't so much the rat, but the fact that she was had a fever and was yeah. in like three inches of water surrounded by actual live rats. Yeah. So that one. So we got a... We gotta, Watch the special features. Isn't it three discs for Lunch Really, just. It's two. Is it two? I, I think it's two. But he one. doesn't want to watch it. It's refusing. Is it because it's Baker? 
I really want to do that one because it's like the, it's Doctor Who in Victorian London. And it's a Sherlock Holmes story pretty much. It's also the only episode where he doesn't wear a skull. I really want to do that one. Skull. It's very, it's, it's a true like Doctor Who steampunk style. It's very Victorian. Yeah, it very, is. Very Sherlock Holmesy. Yeah. I love some Sherlock Holmes. I mean, if it, if it's not uh, Benedict, you know, I, I just don't care. Whatevs. <laughs> or an otter that looks like Benedict yeah. Cumberbatch. Yeah, an otter. Yeah. Um, you yeah, know. We've, we've run the course with this conversation. So. Yes, we have. So, um, so remember, uh, we give Faces of Evil. Let me show it to you guys again. Uh, three and a half derpy tardises. Um, we gave you a little bit of food news. Um, oh, and something else. What? We have conventions coming up. Um, because this will be this week. No, no, it isn't. Week. No, is that episode's already in, in. Is already up, waiting for next week. Okay, well, this will still be before Con Carolina. No, it isn't. What? No, I, I've already, I've already pasted Never everything. Never mind. It seems they've already decided to just go and make up episodes out of thin air. No, we. Uh, this might. This might fall before Con Carolinas, but I can't guarantee it. Don't look at me. I, I want to look at you. Just okay. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Oh, I'm swooning. Um. But, ooh. But um. And throwing up a little. <laughs> yes, but I um, have that effect. But I will. I will say this. Um. We were nominated for two parts X. Um, one Yay. in the new, new, new category, uh, new podcast category, and the, um, and the, uh, new specific category on Doctor Who, so hopefully at Dragon Con this year, we might at least make it into the finals, and hopefully, at least for a new podcast, we'll have with Parsec, which will be cool if we do get it, we'll show it off and stuff like that, but, um, we do have some big stuff planned for the 50th, I do have a really cool prize that I'm going to be giving away at the end of the 50th, um, Especially, it's going to be something that's going to be given away in the convention circuit. So definitely, you know, if there's a con that you want to see us at, that you are insanity, please contact us. Please contact your con. It's Gallifrey Pirate Radio at gmail.com. Facebook page. Facebook page. Just type in Gallifrey Pirate Radio in that little search button at the top. Or 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 the website. It, we all. It's all Gallifrey Pirate Radio. Um, I'll be more than happy to come out. You know, we're going to be giving prizes away. The entire uh, 50th anniversary, um, which is, wow, I can't believe it next year. Yeah. I'm so excited. We're just months away. Um, and we're, no, we're halfway there. Six months away, I think, roughly, mm -hmm. before before we hit our, our 50th with who. Uh, and lots of really cool things coming up. So um, until next time, this is Gallifrey Pirate Radio signing off. Yeah. Peace. That's for you, Billy. <laughs>